Transformative Principle, Episode 49, with Dr. Spike Cook. Welcome to Transformative Principle, the show where we learn every week from a leader who's making a difference, how to become better, and improve our schools. I'm your host, Jethro Jones. You can find me on Twitter, at Jethro Jones. You can find great resources and the show notes at transformativeprinciple.com. change topics a little bit and talk about your your personal blogging because you're doing a 365 uh, blog post this year and I think you're actually probably already at 365 but your goal is to blog every single day right yes yeah um, so I'm blogging uh, I, you know it's now November what is today November 7 so I think I'm around 310 or something like that um, the, the idea came from a conversation that I had with um, Kelly Tinkley, who is um, you know, on Twitter and is a, is a prolific blogger and started the uh, Anastasius. I forget how you pronounce it, but it's an academy in uh, Colorado. And we had her on the podcast, and she talked about how she blogged every day for four years. <laughs> I thought that was amazing, you know, and I, I thought about that. And then I saw a lot of these like 365 challenges when I later found out they were just, you know, take a picture a day or something like that. So anyway, I put all this together and I said, you know, what? I, I can do this. I'm going to do this, you know, blog a day for a year. I think I, I think I can I can do this. And I will say that it has been one of the most challenging things, one of the most rewarding things all at the same time. Um, you know, when I talk to upper, upper level administrators and they are amazed at, at the amount of blogs that I can do, um, what I always go back to is that as an elementary principal, I can just walk out my door and get inspired. Mm -hmm. So, and that's really what, like this whole thing is really just about, you know, what inspires you, you know, and, and how can you put those things into words and sometimes it's words or videos or images, but nonetheless, you know, we have so many things that are right at our fingertips, you know, and I, and I think as leaders, we have to take those and, and talk about them and, and write about them, you know, cause you know, in, in education now we're talking about, you know, formative assessments and, you know, common core and all this other kind of stuff. And, you know, we're inundated with all these type of initiatives. So what I always ask people is like, are those initiatives making you better? Are they making you better as a teacher? Are they making you better as a principal? You know, these evaluation systems and all that kind of stuff. And most of the time they say no. So what is making you better? And for me, it's, you know, it's teaching, it's learning, it's creativity, it's innovation. So every time I walk out, like maybe those are the lenses that I have on, but that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for, you know. So uh, it's not it's like I said, it's not been as hard as I thought it has been it would be. But then there have been some times, maybe a half a dozen times where I'm just staring at a blank screen and I don't know <laughs> what to mm -hmm. write. <laughs> so yep. and what I will do then is I will go to my PLN and I will get on Twitter um, and I will look through to see if there's something out there that can catch my eye, that can, you know, um, inspire me to at least get out a paragraph or two um, <laughs> so that I can, you know, continue on with my challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and what are, what are some of the things that you have learned, um, big picture stuff? Uh, about doing this every single day for nearly a year now? Well, I think if you want to get better at something, you have to work at it. You know, like Malcolm Gladwell talks about, you know, the 10,000 hour rule. So that that's sort of the one of the underpinnings of all this. You know, I, I really enjoy writing. I, um, I feel like I have just begun, you know, like, like with this book, I have another book that's going to be coming out next fall. Um, and I, so I really have tried to uh, work on this, and I feel like the the blog 365 has just, you know, enabled me to just write every day. Um, 
so that I'm constantly, you know, working on my craft. Um, mm-hmm. I talk, I talk a lot at, at school about passion. You know, we do, do genius hour and, you know, passion projects. And I, tr- I have to model that for everyone. So what I've told them is, you know, Hey, my passion is, is writing and, and podcasting. So I'm going to work on this, you know, all the time, you know, and I'm not asking them to do it. I'm just saying, this is how I'm doing it, you know, and this is why, you know, this is the, the, when, when you do something pat and you're passionate about it, just like we were talking about earlier, it doesn't feel like work, you right. know, because some people will say like people who are going through their, their doctorate now, they'll say, you know, when I get done this, I don't want to write anymore. I, I want to be out there. I want to be experiencing life and all that kind of stuff. I, I can't believe that you would just be, you know, doing all this writing and, and squirreled away. You know, and I'm like, no, you got it all wrong. In fact, I, I, I live my life. I do, you know, awesome things, you know, with my family and friends. But this has just become a part of it. I just am, I'm better at managing my time than I think I've ever been. So I think that's that's, you know, like I said, that's that's sort of the the, the foundation of this project. Um, I do have thoughts of taking it to an, another level where um you know, maybe this could turn into a book. Maybe this could turn into, you know, some sort of, um, you know, uh, you know, helpful manual of sorts for, you know, what's it like in the head of a principal, you know, for an entire year. So mm-hmm. I'm still, I'm still sort of toying around with that, um, that idea. But uh, it's been, it's, it's been really really helpful for me to talk about leadership, you know, and to talk about the things that are most important. Like I know on our podcast, you know, you had talked about being a, an assistant principal in a title one school. Mm -hmm. So you talked about the amount of office discipline referrals and and the different things that are going on. Well, that's, that's my story. You know, I'm a principal, but I don't have a VP, but that's our story, you know? And when I look at you know, these issues that are going on in education. And I look at, you know, uh, statistics about poverty and the impact of poverty. You know, I blog a lot about that because I think it's things that, you know, people are just not talking about. I, I blog a lot about, um, you know, um, telling our story besides or, you know, besides just the standardized test, because if you looked at our school, you know, on paper, you know, we're a priority school, you know, under this the regional achievement centers Mm -hmm. and, you know, because of our standardized tests. But then when you look at the great things that are going on, when I have teachers that are flipping their classroom and they're, they're like now blogging for Sophia, you know, and they, um, you know, or they're taking formative assessments and using things like Kahoot and uh, Plickers and Google Forms, you know, and they're bringing this learning alive. That's the stuff that that I, I focus a lot on, too. Like, OK, so you want to just look at one area, which is standardized assessments. Well, I'm going to tell you, these are the seven million other things that we should be looking at. And on top of that, we are still pl- trying to play that game of getting our standardized test up, you know, like, like mm-hmm. we'll do it, we'll do it all. Um, you know, and, and just trying to give, you know, a voice where right now I don't know if there is much of a voice, you know, I think traditionally, um, administrators have been compliance officers, you know, like whatever the state government says or the federal government says that they're just gonna, they just did it, you know, like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure as you think, like, Going back to the early 90s when all this stuff started, you know, it's like, why didn't they stand up then? It would have been so much easier, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. now that it's like, you know, 20 years later, they have an assessment for every little thing these kids do, except for the things that are important. And uh, and the reality is you talk to some of them, and the, you know, it just that's how they were. They were just compliance officers. And I think mm-hmm. that there's a whole new generation of people out there that are challenging the process and trying to bring light to you know, these issues that are going on. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I, I am, uh, you know, I am committed to, to making sure that we tell our story besides this silly standardized assessment. Yeah, I hear you. And that, um, that, that is a hard balance to have because your, your job as a principal is, um, is, you know, if you're not, if you're not enforcing the things that that need to happen 
then the district will say, we don't really need you to be here, you know? And so I really believe that you're taking the right approach, that sharing the amazing things that are happening in your school is a way to, is a way to make, uh, how do I want to say this? It's, it's a way to take those standardized tests and say, these actually don't really matter because we all know that they really don't. It's an autopsy. It's one time we get the results back after everybody is done for the year. So it's not like they're informing our instruction that much. Um, and so, but they're what all the accountability is. And if you can show the amazing things that your school is doing that aren't tied to that, you become more valuable to your to the parents, to the teachers, to the students, and I believe to the admin the district administration because they are seeing that you are hopefully raising test scores, but you're also doing all these other things and talking about all these amazing things that are happening. And if you can share those in a positive way, you can really start to impact um, some some meaningful change, I believe, if you're if you're actually talking about those things and not ignoring them so you can only focus on standardized tests, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think that, like, you know, in order to be transparent, and I talk about this in the book, too, like, you go through different stages, you know, where, like, a, like and, and that's through anything and being a leader, you know, so it could be social media, it could be just in your building, you know, but I want to be as transparent as possible. I don't, you know, and I, I always represent things on a positive light. So I, I'm glad that you had mentioned that because I don't want people to think that, you know, I'm just sort of railing against, you know, standardized assessments, sure. you know, and being negative about it. No, I, I don't believe that they're getting the information that they really need from them. But okay, this is what you want to do. That's fine. So I will do those. I will play, like I said, I'll play that game. We'll do as best as we can. Um, but I'm also going to do, you know, the other things, the important things that, that are making, you know, citizens and digital citizens, um, parents, you know, they, they love this stuff, you know, they're, they're finally feeling like that they have somebody that's actually advocating for them, you know, and, um, so a, a lot of times, you know, if I have decisions that I have to make, you know, there's a trust that was built and, and it's been built through, you know, person, person contact, you know, the things that they see in the school mm -hmm. and also stuff through, through social media. And, and I feel like if I wasn't doing those things, if, if I, if I didn't have a complete and full picture, then yeah, there probably would be some problems there. But I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to show is, you know, this is the big picture. I think you had asked that earlier, like, what is, what is the big picture of all this? And really it's, you know, Hey, here's one little school in Southern New Jersey with about 300 kids and 40 teachers, you know, where we're, we are doing the best that we can to, uh, to, to make sure that kids understand you know, these are the things that you value in life. These are the things that are going to make you a good citizen. You know, these are the things that are going to help you to get a job that doesn't even exist yet. You know, and I, because I really believe that, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. And they're still kids. They're still kids, you know. Right. <laughs> like, we forget that, you know, a lot of times they'll talk about, because, you, you know, sometimes you hear like politicians and stuff and they talk about like different grade levels. It's like, okay, do you, you do realize that we're talking about six, seven, eight year old kids, you know, and I, I really try to make that as a, a parent as well, you know, like these are still kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, they totally are. And um, yeah, there's. This is a, a great conversation that I love to have. And like you said before, this doesn't feel like work to me. This feels like I'm I'm learning how to be a better leader in many areas, not just um, not just in how to how to carry out the the mandates of the district or the state or the federal government. You know, I'm I'm learning how to relate to the students in my school, their families, how to make connections with them, how to recognize the great things that they're doing and you know all those things um are so powerful and so beneficial to a student's life and not just their school life but to 
to all of the aspects of their life and that's it's it's powerful so thank you for for going down that that path with me yeah no problem i hope it you know I hope if anything I, I think a lot of times this when when we do that work getting back to what we've talked about in the beginning the work with the pln you know sometimes it just validates the things that we are doing like saying like hey right on like there's somebody out there in alaska that has this same philosophy you know that they want to make the school better for kids they want their parents to feel like wow i'm going to drop my kid off at the school and i know that that these people have the best intentions you know and that they're going to you know expose them to things that are going to help them out in life you know and then there's people like that in wisconsin and california and Mm -hmm. you know and then you, you just start seeing this interconnected web grow and grow and it may not be as big when you look at you know the entire you know, uh, amount of school districts that are in this country and the entire amount of uh, school administrators that are out there. Because that's the funny thing. Like, I always thought, like, oh, this this Twitter, you know, sort of introduction, Twitter 101, blogging 101, you know, eventually this is going to, you know, uh, go away because, you know, everyone's just going to get connected. <laughs> you know, the right. reality is we're far from that. Like, we are still just a drop in the pond, you mm-hmm. know, of the amount of people that are actually out there as educators. And for some reason or not, you know, they're, they just haven't connected to, you know, why is it important to do this? Why is it important to take a, you know, a, a little bit of time on a Saturday morning to discuss issues with people or write about something or read something that could make, you know, their life a lot easier and their kids, you know, the students, uh, you know, in their school or in their classroom better. And, um, you know, it, it just, it, I guess it just takes time, you know, and it takes, um, it takes people like you and I to get out there and, and to talk with them. And, um, and also, you know, to, to take the time to, um, show them how to do things. Like I've done some, you know, some sessions where I just literally sat with somebody and just said, this is how you do a blog post. I know that we always tell you about why you should blog and, and why you should share your school story. But here, do you know how to do it? And, you know, and they will say, no, I don't. I have no idea how to do this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here it is, you know, person to person. Like, let's, let's write a couple paragraphs. Let's put an image in there. Let's put some links in there. You know, we take a lot of that stuff for granted, but... Um, and, and no one told us how to, you know, we just sort of figured it out or we looked at the, like the different, um, examples that were out there. But the, uh, the, the, the ironic thing is that it's, sometimes we have a tough time, you know, helping, you know, somebody who's just starting out and, um, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done to help people, um, you know, with this. And the, the cool thing is that when you start to do those type of things and you start to see, you know, people grow, you, it, it's amazing. Like I, I taught a, um, I taught an online graduate course last, uh, I guess it was like between January and say March or April. And, you know, it was a school finance course that I'm sure a lot of people were like, this is going to be, you know, just awful. Like I just have to get right. through it. Right. So, most of the content was already loaded. Most of the content, you know, that, that I had to do was, was already there. And, you know, um, I saw just managing discussions and, and reading papers, right? So long story short. So every week, though, I would put some different announcements up there. So I would put announcements like, hey, have you guys, you know, checked out Twitter as a professional development, you know, opportunity? Here's a link, you know, um, the ASED conference is coming up. You should follow this hashtag. Mm-hmm. So I actually had one person, uh, his name is Brian Costello. He's, uh, he's a teacher and aspiring administrator that really connected with this. Now I see that guy out there all the time. He's doing presentations. He's doing Twitter chats. And it, he, he's great. He's actually doing a blog 365 challenge as well. So, you know, it is really awesome to see that like hey there was at least one person in that class that said wow this is really cool made the connection with it and now is taking it to the next level mm-hmm. yeah and that that's enough right yeah <laughs> you, you don't need to have every single person uh do it you recognize the value of every person did and how much they would be able to contribute but you know you don't 
it's not like you and I are, are saying like our mission is to get everybody to use Twitter. Our mission is to get everybody connected. Really, our mission is to make our students' lives better, to help them have better teachers, better leaders. And, and this is just one way that we're doing it among many different ways in our everyday lives, right? Exactly, yeah. And that, everyone cannot, will not, and, and probably should not be connected, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's, that's completely up to them. And, um, you know, we just have to sort of model the way for people who are looking at it and, um, and then just continue to, like you said, feed our school, you know, feed our school information, good ideas, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that's, and that's the, the most important thing, you know, and, and take care of ourselves. You know, I think, like I said earlier, you know, although I spend a lot of time, you know, with being connected and on social media and stuff, it's, if it wasn't making me better, I wouldn't do it. So that's the other thing. I see the benefits of it and that's Mm -hmm. really helpful. Yeah, that is. And, and if we can help other people improve themselves, then that's uh, an added bonus. And, and maybe, it, they're not connecting, but they're learning from the things that that we have that we have done. So, anyway, uh, great conversation, Spike. Thanks so much. Um, my last question is: What's one thing that someone can do, a leader can do today, to become a transformative principal like you? Hmm. One thing that they could do, I guess, like as a result of listening to this, they are <laughs> already taking, you know, the first. The first step, which is to, um, you know, to to listen to what other people are doing. I think, um, you know, there's there's a bunch of people out there right now who are writing blogs, who are doing podcasts, who are tweeting and uh, making videos, uh, and and it's all right there. And just like in my book, and I hate to be corny or cliche, but it's all just a click away. Like if you want to find this information out, it is just a click away. It's not like you have to wait for, you know, the the news subscription to come in, the monthly, you know, newsletter or, or magazine or the newspaper. You don't have to wait for that kind of stuff anymore. You have to be in control of your learning. So if you're, you know, if you're listening to this, this, this should just validate that you're taking that first step. The important thing is then to share it with somebody else um, and, and have them uh, exposed to the great things that are going on. Um, and I think if, if they could try anything or the, the, the best starting place is obviously Twitter, uh, free, um, as uh, tech girl, Jenny says, it's, uh, random, amazing, and, you know, and, and frequently, um, uh, inspiring something like that. She says about mm-hmm. Twitter and, uh, it's so true. So, um, that that's those are I know you said one thing, but I think those would be two things. <laughs> that's great. That's great. So how can people get in contact with you, Spike? Sure. Um, on Twitter, I'm at Dr. Spike Cook. I have a website, drspikecook.com, that has uh, all my blogs and contact information. And um, one of the the things that I'm most proud about is the um, school blog that that I do uh, every week. That's rmbaconweekly.blogspot.com, and that's um, you know the highlighting the great things and awesome things of the uh, RM Bacon Bears down here in South Jersey. All right, that's awesome. Um, I uh, really appreciate the time you've taken, so thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you so much for downloading and listening to this podcast. Please subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher, and please feel free to give us a rating on Stitcher Radio or on iTunes so that we can help spread the word about how much we're learning in this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can find me on Twitter at Jethro Jones. (laughs) 